life, sex, goals, and oh, hell knows, this is Midlife Craving. Oh shit, new status, who dis? Wait a minute, I'm having an overwhelming sense of deja vu right now. Oh, that's because I've already recorded this episode last weekend with my gay husband, Zach, and I failed to realize the entire time that my mic was dead. Uh, It wasn't plugged in all the way. So typical Adrian, my usual antics. Here I am re-recording on my own. You know, it's, I'm not trying to make excuses, but a lot of my listeners are like, Adrian, we want to watch you, you know, we want to watch your podcast. We want to see video. Do you have a YouTube channel? You know, what's going on? And I know that most popular podcasts, they do have, you know, visuals and they have a show. And so I was like, fuck it, I'll try it. So I bought lighting, camera, tripods. Like these are things that I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. I mean, when I took on this entire venture, I didn't know what kind of microphones to buy or what post-production would, you know, entail. And so I'm kind of just winging it. And, you know, I was getting set up with Zach, turning on lights, and it was a bit of a distraction. And I just, I failed to do a mic check and the wire was just a little bit loose. So hard, Mm, hard, (laughs) hard fucking lesson learned. If you follow me on Instagram at midlife craving, you already know all of this. And it's funny. I took a poll uh, to my followers and I said, should I just postpone or should I man the fuck up and just do it myself? Majority was, you know, for the latter, but a couple of people were like, no, like postpone that shit. That's way too much. And no matter how bad I wanted to throw in the towel yesterday. I mean, I like, it took my breath away. Like I felt so gutted. There's just something inside of me that was like, Adrian, you can't give up. So here I go again on my own. Wait, that's a song. Like (laughs) that should be here. I go again on my own. Like that should be my fucking theme song in life right now. But here I go. Episode 12 on my own. What the fuck ever. I talk a lot about my why when it comes to the show and it's the same answer for me every time. I just want others to know that they're not sitting alone on this midlife struggle bus. I mean, we might as well have fun hitting speed bumps together, right? I mean, shit, my ass is catching some air lately, let me tell you. (laughs) We can navigate through this shit together and laugh along the way. I mean, laughing is what I like to do. It's definitely better than crying. I will say there are so many times, though, when I feel like maybe I'm doing this show so you guys can feel better about your life when you're like, damn, like her shit is fucked. But no, really, it's truly for the community. We are in this together, people. Yeah. So I know we hear that all the time these days. During quarantine uh, last year, I found this meme and it was like a triple penetration. It was two cocks in the pussy, one in the ass, and it simply stated, we're in this together. (laughs) That we fucking are. It's time for my five minute orgasm. It's where I release all the shit going on in my life. And uh, there's a fucking lot. You know, I was thinking, I was driving home from work and I was like, wow, like I was really amped up. I mean, I was like, Hurricane fucking Adrian, category five, coming in hot. Like, uh, luckily for me, I came home, saw Captain Morgan twice. Okay. And I feel a lot better. So I'm able to get my ass down here and get this show on the road. So you heard that right at the beginning of this episode, new status, who dis? When I first started the show, my status was it's complicated. Uh, Prince Charming had moved out and it was temporary. We were just working through some shit in our relationship. I felt over the last few months, like And I know people are thinking like, oh my God, Adrian, you went to St. Lucia, like, wasn't that great? Like, but even with St. Lucia, you know, like, it's like the more things changed, the more they stayed the same. And ultimately a decision has to be made. This decision did not come lightly. This wasn't something that I was like, oh, fuck you. I'm done. You know, like this has not been easy, but I just know that I cannot tolerate non-negotiables. Uncle Mo and I talked about this on the last episode. You have to put yourself your standards, and your worth, most importantly, first. If you don't, then like how the hell are you ever going to be happy? I read this quote the other day and it said, growth will feel like loss. Remember that. And that speaks a lot right now to what I'm going through and what I'm feeling. I've been kicking ass and spending a ton of time in the gym. 
well, no, wait, no, somebody else has been kicking my ass. Uh, I met this like bodybuilder. He's like a big, huge monster (laughs) who actually listens to the show and he's been sending me workouts and they've been fucking crushing me. Each workout comes with like an hour of cardio after an hour of weights. I mean, I could barely open doors last week. (laughs) I was like, God damn. But you know what? He's challenging me and I'm doing things that I don't normally do. Pull ups. Fuck those things. Jump rope and lots of new things. But it's really been good for me. And I appreciate him. I appreciate you. You know who you are. Uh, I'm going to go meet up with him next week for an actual like one-on-one workout. And I am fucking scared, (laughs) but you know what? I appreciate it. And I appreciate the support and working out has always been like a release for me. And it's something very healthy that I can do right now. So I'm looking forward to the challenge and I'm going to keep my ass in the gym. I mean, there's no negatives to it. I mean, who doesn't want to have a perfect body for hot girl summer, right? (laughs) I'm also working on some home projects. You can just call me Bob the Builder, baby. (laughs) I'm getting new flooring upstairs. I got to paint two bathrooms. I'm going to turn my second walk-in closet, I've decided, into like a makeup get ready room. And I'm fucking excited about that. You know, I always talk about how I will never get married again. And right now, I feel like you can just add no shacking up to that list. I am just going to enjoy my space, myself, for me, and, you know, my baby girl, and just, I'm going to pretty much be avoiding that whole living together situation again. Man, I tell you, I talking about living together and living situations, I have a funny ass story to tell. And Zach and I, when we originally recorded this episode, we were like in tears about this because <laughs> he was telling me, so we have a friend and she's kind of like my spirit animal. I fucking love her. I call her Ms. Unbothered and I'm begging her to come on this show. I'm really hoping that she will. But she's been in the dating scene for a couple of years now. And her stories and her unbothered attitude, I mean, they fu- it fucking kills me. Right now, in fact, she's been dating this guy, right? And she went up to Zach and she was like, hey, do you think it's a big deal that he doesn't know where I live? And Zach was like, I don't know. I mean, it's only been a couple of months, whatever. And she was like, no, it's been a year. <laughs> like, an entire fucking year that she's been dating this man and he doesn't even know where she lives. And she's so fucking unbothered. She's like asking someone else for advice. Do you think that's a problem? <laughs> you know? I mean, talk about having your own space. This shit makes me laugh so hard, but I can truly understand it now. Like I, I really fucking can. I've also been focusing on friends and just trying to let loose and chill a little bit. So (laughs) this weekend, I'm kind of glad that, well, no, I'm not glad at all. I mean, it's been a fucking shit show this week. Uh, But, you know, with I recorded on Sunday morning early with Zach and we had a great day. I was feeling really good. The episode was hilarious. We were laughing a lot. We went and had brunch. And then I met up with some friends. You know, I love Buck Murphy's Bar. and, And, you know, I've been meeting people in there. So two weeks ago, after Uncle Mo and I finished recording, we went to Buck's and I met this girl. Well, I kind of just like met her, said hi a couple times, but we barely talked. And then like later that night, like she was like, I fucking like you. And I was like, I fucking like you too. Like you could just get the vibe off of her. And she gave me her number and I was like, yeah, let's, let's hang out sometime. And so on Sunday I had never hung out with her before, but I was like, I just, I just knew we would hit it off. So went to her house. And of course we ended up at Buck Murphy's me and her were laughing and joking and saying, tell me you're going to Buck Murphy's without telling me you're going to Buck Murphy's, you know, like a TikTok fucking thing, because this is always where you end up, you know, it's like cheers around here. Anyway, long story short, I don't even know how the fuck, but we ended up at the American Legion down the street. Okay. So we we go in there and it was like stepping back into the 1970s and we, it's like, it's cash only. And all I have was a $20 bill. And Carissa's like, it's fine. I was like, I got the first round. Like we can, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll go to an ATM, whatever. And she was like, give me $10. And I was like, okay. So I gave her $10. There's slot machines there. This bitch literally goes over there, sticks the money in the machine, comes back five minutes later, and she's like, look what I turned $10 into, and it was fucking $66. Like, we went fucking crazy. We were laughing so fucking hard because I was like, yes, like, that's our personal ATM. We are set here. And by the way, I mean, cheap beer, $66 goes a long fucking way at the American Legion. I'm just going to tell you that right now. (laughs) But I was just like, I just, I love days like that when... 
you're with good people. You're having a lot of fun. Wild and crazy shit just happens and you end up at the American Legion. I mean, <laughs> uh, what's really funny is the next night I got a text and um, our friend that belongs there was like, hey, you want to let me know you want to go to the Legion tonight? And I'm like, oh, my God, this is totally going to become a thing. <laughs> So as I wrap up this five-minute orgasm, my life lately, it's basically just a whole lot of me doing me. And speaking, oh God, of me doing me, oh God, this is so hard. It's like, I feel like I'm like, take my life, but not the D. <laughs> it's like, oh, but here it goes. Watch the fuck out world because I'm on a new diet. It's not no carbs. It's definitely not no beer. It's no D for 60 days. <laughs> it was hard to get that sentence out. I swear to God, my heart like just skipped a beat. <laughs> That's right. I am seriously gonna abstain. Okay. Abstain. Whenever I say that fucking word, I think like abstain, you know, like come on my abs. God, I can't even get through a fucking sentence without thinking about sex right now. But in all seriousness, I know I joke and laugh a lot about summer 2017 when I was going through my divorce and God, all the debauchery that occurred. But at the end of the day, that shit was just not healthy. Partying, having sex, acting a fool. It was just not productive for me. So I'm trying really hard, that word hard, (laughs) to be smarter and healthier this time. I need to abstain. (laughs) I need to heal. I really need to refocus, reset. And I guess that means just jerk off a lot too, which I don't have a fucking problem with. But it's like, there's nothing like the real thing, baby. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, they, they like, they wake and bake. Well, I'm going to be rise and vibe. I mean, God, I've been, I've had three orgasms since 8 p.m. last night. So uh, that just tells you I had two orgasms before I walked in this room. <laughs> I mean, this is the level of like the appetite that I have to curb. Also, I've been watching some new porn too. You know, I love talking about porn and different rabbit holes that I find myself down. I have no shame in sharing. Uh, but I Googled come twice and it is so fucking hot. There's this one where a guy walks up to this girl. She's like pressed up against the wall and he fucks her, comes and then like waits just like 30 seconds and then starts fucking her again. Like, God, uh, I am so fucking into that. And he, then he, this comes again. Like, I'm like, oh my God, like that's so fucking hot. I want to find someone who like has those skills, you know, in 60 days, 60 fucking days. By the way, my friends are already making wagers. They're laughing at me and thinking I have absolutely no chance that I have no willpower and zero self-control. And I agree a little bit, but I have some Lululemon leggings on the line. Uh, I got a $50 bet with someone else. Oh, and Uncle Mo says I have to do five push-ups every time I think of D. <laughs> I think I texted him the other morning. It was like, I don't know, 730 in the morning. And I was like, I already did 40 push ups. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm not fucking surprised. Oh, God, I swear. I think I'm at about 500 a day. I ain't doing that shit. Sorry, Uncle Mo. But I will I will think of doing it when I think of D. I promise that I will do that. <laughs> All right. But seriously, OK, here are my keys to the 60 day no D diet. Number one, make sure I'm jerking off a lot that that's a fucking given. And Zach was laughing at me when we were recording. He was like, Adrian, what's so fucking different about your life with that? But I mean, everything is going to be staying charged. I'm going to be really focused on making sure that I'm not, you know, disappointed with anything like that. And I think that my fellow nymphos and high sex drive peeps can relate. Like if I don't have that release, like I'm going to be raging. I can get to the point where I feel like I'm going to break things. Like I'll pick up my phone at work and I'll like just hold it so tight. It's like cracking. Cause I'm like, Oh my God. Like, you know, um, so definitely got to make sure I'm taking care of that. Number two, stay busy. I mean, load my calendar up <laughs> loaded. <laughs> All right. Five more uncle Mo, five more. Uh, but seriously, I'm gonna kick ass at work. I'm really trying hard to get promoted in the next year. I've got three shows this month. I have an interview every week as well. So if you follow me on Instagram at midlife craving, I'm going to be doing a bunch of interviews. I'm actually going to have some Instagram live events, stuff like that. So, you know, just trying to grow my little show. 
Uh, and then, of course, I mean, making time for friends, making lots of plans and cultivating those relationships. I think that's what everybody goes through when they're doing this, you know, like you just get back to your roots, you know, and staying busy is fucking key right now. All right. Number three, drink less. So I, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking like, oh my God, Adrian. So no D and drinking less. Like that sounds fucking terrible. That is a complete recipe for disaster. And I'm, I know that, but drinking just leads to bad behavior for me sometimes. So it's like, you know, more inhibitions go out the window and let's be honest, I don't even really have that many to begin with. And I don't want to find myself where I was at the end of summer in 2017, just with a lot of regrets and just dumb shit that I did. And so I'm, I think drinking less is going to be a win-win because, you know, less calories, lose weight, and also just less dumb behavior. And oh God, I have a story to share about this because it's one of the things, it's one of the biggest reasons why I'm striving for this no D diet because I don't want to make a mistake like I did in summer 2017. So, oh my God, I know Katina is like fucking cringing right now because she knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> All right. So I had a uh, social media business. I think I've told you guys that before. And one of my clients was actually Chick-fil-A and I loved working for them. Uh, you know, and the employees there were awesome. You know, it's true. Like they pay their employees well and it is their pleasure. <sighs> pleasure. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it was a great place. And I got to know a lot of really cool people and it was fun. So one night I'm at this shithole bar, I'm by myself and I was drinking tequila. Like that's a huge fucking problem. And one of the managers there texted me and he was like, Hey, what are you up to? And so of course I'm like, Oh my God, you know, I'm down the street, whatever. Meet me. Long story short, I ended up fucking him in my car, like the front seat of my fucking car. Okay. Like I had taken, I, it was cold. I took my tights off. I was wearing a dress. I don't know fucking why. Took my tights off. I threw them out the window. Um, yeah, it was just, and to be honest with you, I mean, I was drunk. Like a lot of it, I just have like a, just a couple of memories, you know, in and out of it. But I know for sure that I fucked him. And I swear, like the next day, I was just full of so much regret. And it's not him. This has nothing to do with him. Great guy, super nice. But I was just like, oh my God, Adrian, because he was like really young and he was like hitting me up and he was like, Hey, I want to see you again. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I can't, like, I think and I feel bad because I think I kind of like ruined him a little bit. Like, I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but man, epic fucking fail on my part. Like I said, nothing to do with him. But what's really funny is like later on, I had like a dick appointment and I was like hanging out with this guy and like oral, whatever. And I remember he like came like in my, it was like on my face and down my neck or whatever. And like afterwards, I was like, man, I'm fucking hungry. So I go, I go to Chick-fil-A curbside pickup, you know how easy that is. And guess who fucking comes out to give me my food? And I'm like, oh my God. So he's like, Hey, you know, Adrian, great to see you. And he reaches in and like kisses me on the cheek. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Oh my God, I reek of sex. Like there's dried up cum on my neck and he's fucking kissing me on the cheek. Like I felt so I was just like, Oh my God, like Adrian, get your fucking life together. Um, but so anyway, so I'm drinking less so I can have make less mistakes. Um, cause I don't want shit like that to happen again. God bless. All right. Number four, God, three, <laughs> I can't believe I fucking admitted that, but you know, whatever. All right. So number four, work out constantly. That's not really anything different for me either, but you know, working out makes me feel really good. And not only that, it wears me out. So it helps me get out aggression. Uh, it makes me tired and there's a huge benefit because I get in better shape. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time at the gym and working out. So lastly, number five, make and keep priorities. Like keep them fucking straight. <laughs> you know, like my goal is to be a really good mom. I want to crush it at fucking work. You know, I want to work really hard and get promoted. Um, I want to grow the show. Like I said, I'm doing, you know, three interviews this month. I have three shows. I'm working on getting new guests and I just, I just really want to see this thing be a success. My listeners who reach out to me and share stories with me about how things I've said had helped them. Like that is my drive. That really just keeps me going. So, uh, the keys to my no dick diet, number one, make sure I'm drinking off a lot. Number two, stay busy. 
Number three, drink less so I don't make mistakes like fuck the Chick-fil-A manager. Number four, (laughs) work out constantly. And number five, make and keep my priorities. Keep them straight, you know? All right. Now, listen, after these 60 days, I just want to say, hopefully I'm like one of them people that like goes to church and the pastor comes over and like slams him in the forehead and they're like healed. Like that's, that's the fucking goal for me right now. I'm really hoping that, you know, this little adult timeout helps me heal from the last year and a half in my life, which has been pretty fucking chaotic. And then come July, Mr. July, I cannot, I definitely can't think about him. <laughs> There I go again. But come July, I'm going to be looking for some fun. And maybe I'll wear like a sign around my neck that says like wanted FWB, you know, friends with benefits. Uh, And then I'll be like apply within, within me. (laughs) Oh, God. But until then, all right, I need you guys to help keep me strong. 60 fucking days. Like I got this, right? Like I got this. I think I can. I think I can. (laughs) God, I think, you know, Zach had recommended that I put a sign, you know, in my office that says like, it's been this many days since Adrian's had D. (laughs) And then on my bad days, people would be like, oh, well, it's been 40 days. She's probably really raging right now, you know? (laughs) All right. So I've gotten a lot of requests from my listeners lately. I love when you guys reach out to me and tell me things you want me to talk about. And three people in the last two weeks have been like, I want you to talk about friendships. And when I was recording this episode with Zach, I thought, God, this is perfect because he is one of my best friends in the world. And I feel like we have such a great friendship and, you know, we really locked down like what a good friendship should be. So I'm just I'm so disappointed that like the whole, the whole episode was over an hour. It's just gone, gone with the wind. <laughs> but I learned, I learned my lesson. That's about, that's what life is about. You know, learn, living, learning, and fucking moving forward. Anyway, so Zach, Zach and I, we just want the best for each other. And we have no other motives like in each other's lives, but to be there and support one another. And that's a really hard thing to find. Uh, When I was planning this episode originally, I was thinking about, you know, friendships. And, you know, I love talking about cycles and circles and whatever, uh, but looking into it and like you can break down the friends in your life to specific circles. So there's three of them. The first one is outer circle. So these are people that you encounter regularly, a coworker, parent at school, a friend of a friend, right? Um, You have a relationship with them, but there's not a deep connection. There are people that like you laugh and have fun with, but you're not going to share your innermost feelings, troubles, or secrets. Next is the middle circle. Those are good friends that you socialize with. Um, You're going to share stories and interests with them, but you're not going to be too detailed. And then finally, you have your inner circle. So these are people that are very close to you. Uh, These are people that you should trust implicitly. They love and understand you through thick and thin throughout your life. You know, my mom used to always say to me, Adrian, you're lucky if you can count five friends on one hand. So true. Like, I really feel like your inner circle should be less than five people. Zach had the best analogy when we were discussing this this weekend. He said he sees friendships as a tree. So you have the leaves and those are seasonal and they can be your outer circle. Then you have branches and there's a lot of them. You can stand on some and they'll build you up. Some of them might break as well. And then you have the roots and you don't have many of them, but you have to have them for the whole thing to live. And I fucking loved that analogy. I was like, wow, that's that gives a perfect visual to like how your friendship should be. You know, leaves come and go. They change. Sometimes they're there just for a specific reason and then they die and go away. Sometimes you're like, damn, I'm so glad that bitch is gone. Right. (laughs) I mean, I've definitely been through that. Uh, you know, then you have your branches as you know, and they grow and you can stand on some and they may keep you up and some of them may break, but you always have to have those roots, you know, to ground you and they're vital. So be really careful with like who you're keeping in your inner circle, your, you know, those people that are your roots because you will need them in your life. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about these, you know, circles of friends or whatever. So those outer circles, like Zach would say, the leaves on your tree. Those are people at like work, school, they live in your community or people that you see on social media. You know, you have like a thousand friends on social media. Uh, I feel like they're a very fluid group of people that will move in and out of your life over time. You have to be really careful not to share too much with like the people in your outer circle because it can cause resentment. Um, You'll feel regret after telling them or they might embarrass you about something that you share. So just think of those outer circle friends, your leaves on the tree. 
and who they are in your life. The middle circle, you know, the branches, they may bend or break or they may hold you up. These friends are important, but they may come and go like based on certain interests at your life at any given time. And your emotional investment with these friends is definitely going to be more than your outer circle, but way less than your inner circle. And you want to be careful still with sharing your innermost secrets to your middle friends, because again, you can regret it or be embarrassed or just feel like you really shouldn't have shared that. We've all been there. And then lastly, your inner circle, your roots. (laughs) Zach and I were like laughing about that, but it's so fucking true. And you want to be really selective with them because those people, you know, those roots in your life, they have a strong impact on you. And especially how you feel about yourself. And I feel like those like inner circle friends, like they're going to impact your overall happiness in life as well, because that's who you're constantly surrounding yourself with. I think there's a quote where it's like the people you read, the, the people, I think it's like the books that you read and the people that you surround yourself with are vital to like the personality and the person that you are today. So I'm a big believer in that as well. I want to talk more about these inner circle friends because I really feel like they're very important people, those VIPs. I mean, sometimes your inner circle friends can actually, you know, be your family, become your family. I know that I absolutely think of Zach and Katina as my family. They, as your friends, I mean, who ultimately become like your family, they can change the paradigm of your entire life. I had a listener who reached out to me and she was telling me how her best friend has been putting her down lately. I mean, the stuff she was telling me, it sounded to me like verbal abuse, like with insults and everything. And I was just like, listen, that is not a best friend. Like she should not be in your inner circle. She needs to be one of those outer circle leaves and then she needs to fall off and die really soon. (laughs) You know, don't tolerate that bad negative behavior from someone that you let get close to you. I mean, it's just, it's a fucking non-negotiable, just like in relationships. Like you cannot have that toxic shit around you because it's going to start to wear off on you as well. And by the way, that person is definitely a frenemy. You know, someone who is friendly to you because you bring them benefits, like when it, when it benefits it's them. And yet they harbor, you know, feelings of resentment or worse. And we've all had that friend, someone who has a rivalry with you. That's not a fun thing to be around. And just to make it loud and clear, those people are that way because of their own insecurities. It has nothing to do with you. Don't feel bad about it or tolerate that shit at all. So I feel like your inner circle friends, there's a few things that they should definitely do in your life. Like I, I just, If someone out there is like wondering, you know, like my inner circle friends, like what should they do? What should they mean in my life? So they should definitely do the following. Accept you for you, even as you grow and change. You know, I talked a lot about my divorce and going through that, how many friends I lost. And it was a lot, you know, they were not there for me through growth and change. So obviously they weren't inner circle true friends, you know. And sometimes it's really hard to fucking realize that. Um, There should be mutual respect and trust between you two. That's a huge thing. They should also share and listen to the good and the bad. Like, you know how you have those friends that are only around for the bad? Like, you know, misery loves company. Or you only have those friends who just want to really deal with you when there's good stuff going on. Uh, I feel like I want someone in my inner circle that's my biggest cheerleader and then yet my most support. So like either way, I know I can count on them. Good friend in your inner circle is not going to judge you when you're expressing your thoughts and feelings. And I'm talking for real, no judgment zone. And you should be the same way with them. Another thing is you don't want a friend in your inner circle that's going to take advantage of you and vice versa. Like you two should have, you know, bounce back and forth with how you support one another. I was going to talk about, and I did talk about this with Zach when we were recording this weekend, three weeks ago, I guess it was, uh, Zach knew I wasn't doing well. I wasn't feeling great. And he surprised me and planned like this entire night for me. It was the sweetest fucking thing ever. He surprised me with a coffee. He made reservations at this restaurant. He, we got pedicures together. And then even at the end of the night, like, and you guys are all going to be like trying to steal him away from me. I know it, but he like pulled out this little gift out of his trunk and he was like, Hey, I know you saw this in a store the other day and you didn't get it. So I went ahead and got it for you. I mean, that is a fucking thoughtful, considerate, kind friend. I mean, some that you definitely want in your corner through life. And I'm so fucking lucky to have that. But on the flip side, you know, Zach called me two weeks ago, he was going to go pick up his husband. And it was literally, I think it was like six o'clock in the morning, I like shot up out of bed. And he was like, Adrian, 
I can't get an Uber. Can you please take me to the airport? And I don't even think I was like wearing pants. So I just hopped in the car, flew over there and got him and took him to the airport, you know, because that is something that he would do for me. So I feel like having that person that's going to help and assist you, but not to, and then not take advantage of you. You know, if you have that together, it's priceless. Okay. So this next one I want to talk about, I feel is really important. And if you're looking around at your circle of friends and you're trying to, you know, figure out what you're going to do and who you're going to put where. I want you to think about this one for sure. You want a friend in your inner circle who's going to give you good advice and assist you with taking action with it, right? Like trials and tribulations will bring out the true colors in your friends out of love, not hurt. So I want to talk about something here um, because I learned a really big lesson over the last few years. You know, I talk a lot about Katina. I've known her for 15 years almost, I guess. She is one of my closest friends, you know, a root in my foundation. I want to talk about this because even though I've already squashed this with her a while back and it's definitely ancient history now, I think that many of you can benefit from this, like, you know, from someone listening to what I've learned from this situation. So when I met Prince Charming, he was my happily ever after. I mean, I've talked about this. He truly did. He saved me. Um, I was not in a good place in 2017. And to be honest with you, he really did bring me back to life. That's something I'm never going to forget with him. Well, a few months into my relationship with him, Katina had pulled me aside and she said, you know, I think that Prince Charming is this, and I know I'm being vague here, but she was basically just like, I think that there's an issue. And I was so upset with her when she said that. I mean, I couldn't believe like, you know, she's seen how much I've been through, how hurt I was like the fucking God, that's all the divorce and legal shit that I was going through. She knew, and I was still going through and how miserable I was in my marriage. I mean, this, she watched me go through everything. And here I was reborn, so fucking happy. And here's, you know, she had a bad word to say about it. And I was really upset. Now I've always struggled with, you know, standing up for myself in interpersonal relationships. So I was extremely immature about this. I just withdrew from her, brushed her off. I, I didn't talk to her for two days. <laughs> we were thinking like two days, but for us, that's like a lifetime in our friendship. My immature self acted that way because I knew deep down when she had said that to me, that she was right. Um, I was definitely in denial and I didn't want to admit it. And, you know, she knew I was upset. She knows me. Me not talking to her was not the norm, but we never, oh, I never maturely addressed it with her. And I regretted it for over a year. As my relationship progressed with Prince Charming and went on, you know, those rose colored glasses, they come off and you start to see things for what they really are. And I was so gutted because I had been so disrespectful to her. When in reality, she was truly just trying to care for me. I mean, she was just looking out for me with love. I remember I called her last summer in tears. I remember I just like pulled over. I was in a parking lot. Um, there was some shit that went down, an incident. And at that point, I mean, my life was pretty much spiraling. And I called her and, you know, she's such a good friend. I don't think she even, I think she just heard that I was upset and she just sat there and listened. And I came clean and I apologized profusely to her. I mean, I was in tears. Like I'm just, I'm so, I was so fucking sorry that I hadn't given her the respect to address her with that. And I had just felt so terrible that I'd never had addressed it with her. She was so fucking understanding and caring about it. And I was like, I was a fucking bitch. I'm so sorry. And she was like, I love you, Adrian, even when you are a fucking bitch. <laughs> and I mean, that's what an inner circle real true friend will act like, you know, she wants me to be happy and she's looking out for me, even when it's not necessarily something I want to hear. I will never take that love for granted again. And I hope that all of you in your life can find your Katina. And I want to say something really quick too. I read this quote and it embodies like what I was just talking about and pretty much everything that I'm going through in life right now. It says the things you ignore in the beginning will be the reasons why you leave. You know, one of the things Zach mentioned, we were recording about this and, you know, as my inner circle friend is that he's like, you know, Adrian, when you notice things or whatever, like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. And he's so right about that. So you can say to your friend, I've noticed these things or my gut's telling me something's wrong. And your friend can determine whether they're ready or not to accept it and listen to it. Like listening is key. They can hear it, but are they listening to it? 
ultimately at the end of the day, you know, you're not responsible for the decision making, but you have to keep them in your best interests and make sure that those that you keep in your inner circle are doing the same for you. Gosh. Okay. So I've talked so much about friendships. (laughs) I hope all of my listeners that have asked about this, um, they feel like they've learned something, especially that great analogy from Zach about that friend tree thing. I mean, he did such a good job with uh, explaining that when we were recording, but you know, I fucked up. So (laughs) maybe next time he'll elaborate on it a little more, but evaluate who's in your circles and make some adjustments if you need to. And Hey, send your best friend a text right now. Tell them that you love them and appreciate them because good friends are hard to find. I love that my cravers out there are reaching out and being like, Hey bitch, talk about this, you know, keep it coming. Oh, coming. Oh God. (laughs) Uncle Mo, that's five fucking more. (laughs) But seriously, I'm here for the challenge and I'll add whatever you want to my show. So let me know um, anything you want me to discuss or talk about. I'm here for it. All right. So I need to get to a quick little ask me anything segment because I have a few of the same questions that I've been getting a lot of lately. So number one, this is funny to me. Are all of your stories really true? (laughs) So I think my last episode about all my work sex capades, people were like, bitch, no, you didn't. And I just want to tell you something. Um, I have no time, absolutely zero fucking time to fantasize or make up any bullshit going on in my life. Every single thing you hear, um, coming out of my mouth is the absolute truth. And that's the only way I know how to be the good, the bad, and the ugly, like it's all real. So yes, all those stories are true. You know, I did fuck a guy in a sauna in my gym. Um, I did, fuck three guys at my first job, my first big girl job. Uh, and I fucked a Chick-fil-A manager, you know, like I don't have any shame in that. I think that's one of the things I'm trying to do here is normalize sex and stuff like that. Like talk about that more, but also not be ashamed, you know, like I'm living unapologetically. And if you want to judge me for that, that's fine, but I'm here to share it. And absolutely every story that you hear out of my mouth is true. All right. Number two, can I be on your show? Uh, absolutely. fucking lutely you know, I had someone that actually reached out last week and she was like, I have an idea and she wants to do like, I guess it's like 21 questions. And basically she's going to ask me questions like really risque questions, which I'm like, bitch, you know, I'm going to answer pretty much anything, but we'll see what she comes up with. And she's like, you got to take a shot after each one. So I don't know. I guess people want to hear me drunk on here. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I'm like, Hey, you have to host it, you know? So, um, anyone who wants to be on my show, if you feel like you have a story to share, I'm all for it. Um, just, you can reach out to me on my website, midlifecraving.com or on Instagram at midlife craving and let's make it happen. All right. Number three, do you have a YouTube channel? Where can I watch your show? This is definitely a very popular request and question that I get. And yeah, I just fucked up my entire (laughs) recording on Sunday because I was so preoccupied trying to get my ass on camera. Um, So yeah, I'm working on it. Um, It's a lot. You know, I have tried to really get better at editing and I might upgrade my mic, stuff like that. Like I'm trying to get the the audio of of my podcast really well and grow my show. And then the video, I mean, that's a whole new animal, but I have some really good friends out there. Shout out to them. You guys know who you are and they're going to help me. So hopefully I can learn and just start getting on video. You know, it's funny when Zach and I were recording, it was the first time. And what bothered me, it wasn't that the camera was on me. It was just all the lights. So I'm also thinking about maybe moving this podcast area into the other bedroom, like a full bedroom, but we'll have to see about all that. But yes, I'm working really hard on it. Okay. My last question. And this is by far my most popular question over the last two weeks. And it's about uncle Mel. Okay. Who is Uncle Mo and what does he look like? Okay, so I'm not going to tell you who Uncle Mo is. I respect his privacy and I also will always respect anybody who wants to remain anonymous on my show. And what does he look like? I mean, he's very easy on the eyes. And a lot of you said like, oh my God, he sounds so sexy. Uh, I agree. And he is. He's very tall. I will tell you that. Um, Super sweet. He has a great smile. Um, I think a little dimple on the right side, but that's probably all I'm going to share. So, all right. And speaking of uncle Mo, huge fucking news. Like I said, he was by far my most popular guest and I'm so excited to tell you he's coming back for more. So send him your questions. Um, let me know if you guys want us to talk about anything specific, 
I'm thinking, you know, he should just be a regular because you guys loved him so much. I mean, I swear to you, I just got texts today. Okay. So in two weeks, I have a new guest coming on. Um, her name is Christina and she's a fellow 40 something midlife craver. And she wants to talk about some deep shit. Um, a couple of things that I haven't touched on on the show yet. She wants to talk about abusive relationships, narcissists. Oh God, that's a, that's a lot to say. Um, relationships, dating disasters, and she said this adultery, Ugh, yikes. Uh, but you know, I'm here for it. We'll talk about it. And of course, sex. I mean, that's a given. All right. So oh man, I'll tell you, I swear to you, I almost threw in the towel yesterday. Um, when I found out that I recorded over an hour with Zach on a dead mic, I'm not kidding. I was just like, fuck this and fuck it all. But here I am, you know, nailing it. And God, getting nailed. Oh God, 60 days, 60 days. Um, but you know what? I fucking got it done. And thank you seriously for listening to my crazy ass. Thank you for the overwhelming support and please keep me and all your thoughts, fucking all your prayers as I take on this 60 day, no D diet. By the way, if you're local and you're looking for me this weekend, I'll be at the Legion playing bingo and drinking $2 beers. Cheers to that.